Welcome, welcome. Ziggy, 1X here with another near reincarnation video. And there's a few things I wanted to talk about before maintenance, or actually not maintenance, the new update hits us at 10 p.m. my time tonight. So that will be 7 p.m. for all you Pacific coasters and all you other guys in the world, you're on your own for that. So let's just real quickly talk about the news that we got. A few pieces. We're getting the rerun of both of the anniversary events, the one that featured Celebratory Fio, as well as the one that featured the Celebratory Lars. Let's go take a look at that real quickly in our announcements. I've got a few predictions to make here too, so stick around for a few minutes while I do this. I think it actually, just to not, uh, not to bury the lead, I think it benefits us to wait on these upcoming banners when they launch. So let's jump on over here to the notices, by the way, just real quickly. We only have, at this point of recording, five hours left on the double rate up and the half energy consumed on these coin quests or these dark memory quests in general. I have farmed many coins, as you can see here. I am now up to 115,000. So that means that I am pretty much good moving forward. Unfortunately, I didn't get a single Zenith Brilliance from all this, but I got a bunch of the other materials, so... Yeah, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. So let's jump back over here to the notices. And I hope everybody's been enjoying that farming. I hope everybody's been able to get all the Zenith that they needed. Unfortunately, I was not one of them. But we have here, we have our two events. Okay, so we had our pre, our paid only pre-Japanese 1.5 year. It was a trap. Everybody, I hope, skipped it unless they really, really, really needed something out of this. But let's take these by the numbers. First of all, we have the FIO event. There's a few things I want to point out on this guy. It's going to be starting at on August 7th, which is today. It's going to be starting tonight. This event is going to be opening up, which very likely means that both of these banners are going to be coming back. These are the banners that had Celebratory Gale, Celebratory Saryu, Celebratory Demios, and a few others on them that were just, all of them are great units. Essentially, all the weapons that came with these costumes were just great. But let's look at some of the details on this. Uh, just as a reminder here, if you've already played through these missions, then you will not be able to repeat play them and get the gems again. If you've already cleared them, you've already collected the gems, it is what it is. If they unlock a new difficulty tier, then you will be able to collect the gems on those, so look forward to that. I have my doubts, though, on the EX, and I'll show you why here in a minute. If you look at this graphic, we only have two kinds of currency. Now, typically when we've seen these, We've seen three types of currency. We've seen the bronze, the silver, and the gold currency. This to me looks like we are getting only bronze medals and silver medals Oh, available on the EX hard. So we will be getting an EX hard difficulty. That is good, okay. But we're not gonna be getting the three types of currency that we're used to getting in the shops. So just be aware of that. So there will be less shops to pull from. Now, the nice thing about having the three different types of currency is if you can successfully farm that EX5 level, that EX hard five level, then you're collecting essentially triple the bang for your buck. You are getting the three different types of currency. Each of those types of currency has their own shop. And so you are getting significantly more benefit for the time and energy invested. There's also a possibility we're gonna be getting half energy on all these events. Don't know if it's going to happen. That is my suspicion moving forward, though. So we will be getting uh, increased returns on that. So this is the Fio quest, okay? So we're going to be getting Celebratory Fio. We're going to be getting her weapon. We're also going to be getting a chance at um, a chance at ex exing her, or sorry, awakening her. <laughs> I've got wow, I got games bouncing around in my head right now. So we'll take a look at her real quickly as well as Lars. But the same thing, you'll take a note. August 7th through the 21st. So this is the same thing. We've got two weeks going on this. And as you can see by this image here, by the way, that is a great weapon that he has. I've used that a lot. So don't, don't pass on that. We've got the 1.5 year anniversary medals. We've only got the two types of currency. So it's gonna be the same situation with this guy. My guess is, is that the bonus units and or the bonus weapons that we're gonna be getting those bonuses from are all going to be past celebratory units. So you may not get the same yield or return on them as you would have with uh, as you will with other units in the full blown anniversary banner when that comes out, but that's not coming out tonight. So let's go ahead and jump past all that. Let's take a look at these units real quickly. Okay, so if we jump down here to our celebratory feel, 
Let's take a long press and look at her resilience. So this a bit <clears throat> grumble. Okay. So her ability is resilience. This is HP up by 10%. She's getting the stats up. She's not getting anything special with her debris. This is something that Cabbage brought up in his last video. He may not even go for the debris with these because they do look like four-star debris and you could get them confused with your actual four-star debris that have a, for example, in this case, it would be attack up by 10%. So you're getting half the benefit. It's got the same icon. It could trip you up a little bit. You may be better served by just selling the Awakening Stone and getting some of the reward shop metal exchanges that you can take over to the Awakening Stone shop and get goodies for that. And that may be what I do as well, even though I've got that little completionist bit in me that's going to feel really weird about not getting her all the way up to stage five. I'm in agreement with him on this. I think that's a good move. So let's jump on over here to Lars real quickly. So not a whole lot to talk about with Fio. She's getting just that HP up. Let's go over. Where are you, Lars? Where are you, Lars? It's not where's Waldo. It's where's Lars? There's Lars. Okay, Ward. So he's getting a nice little defense boost. This is this is cool. All right. All allies defense up by 10%. This is much better than Fio's. And he's already a pretty darn tanky character. One of the other things he has going for him is that he's got this party-wide defense boost for 30 seconds and he cures a, uh, status, a status ailment. So this is something that makes Vanilla Jane very useful. Her uh, One of her costumes, and I now I'm having an absolute brain fart all around the board. Bloody Captive. This is one of the things that makes her so useful in Tower because she can cure status ailments, and this is especially useful for things like Poison, Blaze, and uh, or Burn and Blind because the Blind you can't hit the burn and the poison, you're losing HP throughout the fight. So having something like that in your kit is very useful. It is a free handout, so everybody will get this. Now, here are my thoughts on the banners. I think the banners are probably going to be pretty darn good. And we're going to be getting the return of, my suspicion is, both of the separate banners that we originally got. There may be some tweaks to those, generally speaking, but it's essentially going to be the same thing. It'll have the 200 pull pity, and it'll give us a chance at awakening those units. Now, the, what, the, the most powerful unit to awaken, in my opinion, is hands down Celebratory Saryu. She benefits tremendously from it. And I will just show you because it is very exciting and it may be something that I actually go in for because she is just a powerful, powerful unit. So her awakening is Vigor. And that is a Vigor that is attack up by 15%. That looks really good on her. And her debris is really nothing to write home about. The debris that are the best for the celebratory units are the ones that give you a percentage up for the element associated with the attack. And the bulk of those have timed element ups. There are others that just have a generic element up. I believe it is celebratory Griff. And he has a 15% elemental boost just flat up and that is very nice. And it's not gonna let me see it. There we go. Yeah, water damage dealt up by 15%. That's a really useful debris because that's just something that's on an offhand slot. You don't have to worry about it. Walla bing, walla bang. So here's my prediction on this, guys. We are going to get the new anniversary banner maybe as soon as next week. And I'm guessing it will be next week. It'll be enough time for everybody who really, really wants the Awakenings, or maybe just getting a hold of their first copy of those celebratory units, this is going to be their opportunity to jump in there, and those crafty game developers are planning on that. My guess is, is that we are going to get a banner that includes, if not all, maybe targeted banners, or all of the celebratory units in one banner, with a extra emphasis rate up maybe on the new units, or maybe it'll just be a general all around rate up that allows us to get all of the past celebratory units as well as the new celebratory units. We don't know who those are gonna be yet. And so my, my hunch is, is that we should wait. My hunch is, is that we shouldn't pull right away when it comes around tonight. 
that's that's it. That's what I would. Um, if you have a ton of gems and you just want to, you just have been waiting to pull the trigger on this. You got a hundred thousand gems or two hundred thousand gems or whatever. By all means, go for it. Do what your little heart desires. Get it done. Have a good time doing it. Buff up those units and just enjoy them. They are all tremendously useful units, and they're all different, and they're all good in their own way. But if you are like myself and you're very limited on resources, I would hold off. That's what I'm going to do. Now, there's another thing that I want to point out to everybody. There is a resource that Gotem Five Ones, it's Gotem, G-O-T-T-E-M, one, 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 has created over on Reddit. And it's this guy right over here. Now, what, I, what I'm going to do with my videos moving forward is I'm going to include links to uh, some of the other some of the other YouTubers I've collaborated with in the past or just who I've generally benefited from their information. In this case, uh, Cabbage and Gotem have already gone into depth on the characters and the weapons that come with these past released banners. So I'm not even going to touch that. Their videos already cover everything. There's no point for me to retread already walked ground. But I will point out, and again, there will be a link for this in the description for my video here. This is what we can expect every month to gain from just generally playing the game. This is free to play friendly. We can expect 42,000 or 43,000 essentially gems, depending on how, how lucky we get in the ads, if we're, doing, if we're even doing those, and 58 premium sum tickets. That's actually significant. That right there is enough, essentially, that, actually, wait a minute, 42, that's essentially enough to go to pity once a month. So if we are properly budgeting, now there will be some of us out there who spend occasionally, great. That's what keeps the game afloat. That's, I'm sure the developers and the rest of us really appreciate your sacrifice. Thanks, guys. But this is a very useful resource because this also gives a history of how many gems have been given in the past. Now, we have seen spikes in these gems, and we have seen definitely some downsides of these guys, but this is a great resource. It goes through everything. And again, mad props to Gotem for putting this together. I think that that is all I wanted to go into. This is just a really quick update that I just wanted to take some time to basically get everybody in the frame of mind. Anybody who's willing to listen or thinks maybe I'm onto something here, hold off, guys. Just keep holding on to your gems. We're almost at the real anniversary. This is just a rerun. Go ahead. We're going to get a chance to farm up the shop, awaken those costumes, get some other goodies from the shop, sell the extras that we don't need from the costumes, get duplicates of their weapons if we need those. Both of them have the uh, have the elemental boon attached to them. It's the 24% for the fire, for the Lars weapon, and for the dark, for the Theo weapon. And I think that we should just, uh, anybody who is newer or maybe returning, go ahead and just get those because those are great starter weapons uh, for the more advanced players. You won't need those as much, even though I still think I'm going to benefit from having that extra fire sword because my fire, my, the number of boon weapons, elemental boon weapons that I have for fire is really low. So it's, it's a benefit for me, even though I've been playing for almost essentially since day one. So I think that that is all we got here. I think that's all she got. And there's not a whole lot else to go on to. There's been some great resources coming out here lately. Uh, again, Young Jesus has been doing a great job with his tutorials. He just released a new one for the the uh, Rogue Scarecrows, which uh, I actually I haven't tackled and I'm being lazy on. I was waiting till I got my EX Marie, which I've almost got. I only need three more Zenith to get her. So once I get here, I'll probably start jumping in on those. And I don't think there's a whole lot else to go to. For fear of rambling on too much, let's just leave it at this. I'll go ahead and get this uploaded as quick as possible so that... Again, if people haven't really thought ahead on this, it maybe gives you a heads up. If Just don't jump right into this right away. These banners are going to be around for two weeks. So just hold off on them. See what happens. Collect your gems. Keep hoarding your gems. Let's wait for the anniversary. If I recall correctly, Japan got a lot of summons during the anniversary, during their one-year anniversary. And this is going to be Global's one-year anniversary. So we may be expecting to get some cool handouts. If you've got additional gems and other things to back that up, 
Again, just hold on, see what happens. It's gonna be tempting, I know, but just hold on and wait because the main anniversary banner may have everything we want and more. These new anniversary units may just be out of this world amazing. They may not be, we'll see. And we'll judge that when the, when the uh, banners drop and when the event drops. So otherwise, I hope everyone is having a great day. I'm about to head back out into the field and get some work done tonight. I get, I get to fly a drone in Kentucky, which is really cool. And uh, peace out, y'all. Bye.